cat fruits are a resource that is needed to acquire the true forms of all of the gacha units along with a few others. They are a resource that takes a long time to accumulate and there's a lot of true forms out there. In this video, I'm going to be going through each super rare gacha unit in order and describe the boost that they get when true forming them and how well it improves them. I will also have a priority ranking in the end, but I will include their ranking when discussing the unit as well. This list is based on players who are around the mid game area, around Cats of the Cosmos Chapter 1 or Dead End Night. I will say that this list was harder to make than the rare list since the majority of super rare upgrades are super good and several arguments could be made to put a unit in a higher position on the priority list. I will say this now, that each description I give will be around a paragraph or two at most to save time, so my statements will be very generalized and may miss some things about a unit. Like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Anyways, we have quite a few units to get through. Can Can is without a doubt one of the most important true forms to acquire. Can Can gains a significant stat boost towards their already good attack and health stats to being a great melee attacker. These stat boosts already make Can Can near the top of the priority list, but their talents, or rather one of their talents already puts them in the top shot for the priority list, this being their double bounty talent. Being one of the two good non-uber double bounty units is way too huge to pass up on, and the fact that Can Can is more spammable than Maglav and tankier means you can get a lot more chances to obtain money from several enemies. To know why Can Can is so good, then check out my video about Can Can where I go more in depth about them. A simple stat boost to Ro's health improves their ability to tank red enemies drastically. Ro goes from having 161,000 health against red enemies to 323,000 HP. This dramatic boost means you can easily pile on so many Ro cats on red stages. With their weakened ability, they can effectively get 646,000 health against red enemies. Ro was one of the best units to use against Professor A due to being one of the only units that can get into his range without dying. Ro was also great for Hanya, as a weakened Hanya allows your other strong anti-reds to tank hits for longer. This is especially best paired with a talented Dark Laser thanks to her immunity to weaken. Another contender for one of the most important super rares to unlock. Their range is literally unmatched and works as a great support unit with their slow ability and backliner damage. While their slow uptime is only 25%, this can be improved to a 50% uptime with talents, making stalling from such a far range even more effective. However, this can usually be mitigated if you can stack Cyberpunks. The only real challenge is their 2.5 minute recharge time. Cyberpunk is highly recommended or even required on some stages due to their slow and extremely high range. For example, there's Draconian, the stage for Mana King Dragon, and a stage that is much later in the game, an Ancient Curse. The former stage for being able to outrange Mana King Dragon's crazy 785 range, and the latter for being one of the few Relic crowd controllers you will probably have, especially one that can outrange Relic Bun Bun. Cyberpunk is also one of the few units that, under the right circumstances, along with a lot of time, completely cheese some stages due to the constant damage from Cyberpunk piling up along with infinite slowing if they are all attacking at different rates. While not the best example, Cyber Stacking is a strategy that's used on Floor 48 due to them being one of the only ways to slow Mecha Bun Bun. Cyberpunk's high range along with their slow makes them too important to pass up. Also, if you're worried about his 3,750 costs, you can always get the cost down talents that bring it down to only 3,000. Since most players won't have many options to counter waves with wave blockers or wave immune units, Octopus is a godsend on any wave stage due to being a great asset and completely shutting down most wave enemies. Octopus makes Muscle Party a joke due to outranging Manic Macho Legs and being able to take two hits, three if you even get one extra level on them with a defense small combo. Octopus is also one of the three non-uber rare wave shield units. The other two, Super Cat and Gloomy Neneko have some issues. Super Cat isn't all that good of a wave blocker due to their high knockback count, and Gloomy Neneko has an accessibility issue due to her only being available during the Halloween capsule and other limited sets. When it comes with other ubers, Octopus has the advantage of cost and recharge efficiency due to the inherent nature of ubers being high cost with long recharges. Octopus is a must to make wave stages way less painful. Icat is a great crowd controller against red enemies. Having an area attack, as seen with Sanzo and Bomber Cat, makes a crowd controller go from alright to near the top, and Icat is one of the best anti-red crowd controller units in the game. Their speed up talents can even handle Hanya, making them very easy to deal with. The only reason why they're at the medium priority is because there's so many super rares who you should invest in first, along with the fact that there's just so many red crowd controllers. This by no means makes them bad, just that it shouldn't be the first super rare to true form. Butterfly is an alright rusher, but some simple stat boost turns them into a pretty reliable rusher unit for quick bursts of damage, especially thanks to their 9 second recharge. Probably the biggest change is their range boost. While going from 185 to 215 may seem small, this range is the difference between being outranged and outranging the Bun Bun variants. 
Fishman's attack boost also now means they are dealing an extra 8 to 10,000 damage against floating enemies depending on your treasures. Fishman can also be super useful on stages where rushers are preferred for cheesing strategies or where they are one of the only reliable attackers in the stages. An example of this is the Spy Who Pet Me, the introductory stage of Razorback. Since Razorback spawns on a timer of 70 seconds along with moves that spawn in the stage, Fishman can kill these moves in two hits and you can easily make it so they only have to land one hit thanks to other units like Manic Lion who could deal enough chip damage to kill the moose after a Fishman hit. You can then use other rushers like Bahamut to quickly destroy the base instead of fighting Razorback. In short, Fishman is a reliable rusher for quick bursts of damage and is a great counter to Bun Bun due to the increased range. Now before I get to the next unit, I just want to thank ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Have you wanted to watch a show or movie on Netflix but couldn't find it, only to learn later on that another country does have access to the content you wanted to watch? With ExpressVPN, you can wash away those worries because ExpressVPN lets you change your online location. ExpressVPN has 94 different countries to select from. Just select the country that has the content you wanted to watch and just like that, the show or movie you wanted to watch is now available. ExpressVPN also helps rip that target sticker off your back when connecting to public Wi-Fi. This blocks hackers off your most valuable pieces of data that they could use to make it much harder to do your day-to-day -day online activities such as passwords and banking information. ExpressVPN is also widely respected among various sources such as CNET, The Verge, Mashable, and TechRadar for their fast speeds due to their premium servers, 24-7 customer support, ease of use, and with their trusted server technology, their VPN servers can't log any of their customers if that was something you were worried about. You can try ExpressVPN for 3 months absolutely free by using the link found in the description down below. Luxury Bath Cat gains a big health boost, allowing them to tank extra hits along with the shorter attack frequency, meaning they have an effective higher DPS. It can still work well as a dragon variant for red enemies. The only issue is that it targets red, which as stated with iCat, is a very oversaturated trait, meaning that Luxury Bath Cat's importance drops a lot due to better units existing. The first of three other units on this list, Ultra Delinquent gains the ability to freeze relics, curse immunity, a nice health boost, and a 42% faster recharge rate. However, as an anti-relic unit, Ultra Delinquent somewhat fails in this department for a few reasons. One is that most relic enemies either have a higher range than Ultra Delinquent, such as Amost, or outranging with Omni Strike, such as Relic Bun Bun. This unit is best used alongside Talented Rodeo to help with crowd control against Primeval Cyclone and Old Horn thanks to them having decently low ranges. As a generalist, his recharging cost is too high for the stats that he has. Dealing around 13,000 damage and 4,000 DPS is mid at best simply due to the power level of the enemies in the late game. Though if you have the spare Elder Cat Fruit, it doesn't hurt to add him to your arsenal, especially to counter Old Horn in higher star UL stages, where Old Horn is hard to control, so having that extra support is super useful. Sanzo could do Tathaga does job better thanks to a lower recharging cost, however, they do have a use that Sanzo doesn't. It, along with Necrodancer, outrange Mechabun, who will push very hard without these two, though outside of that, just use Sanzo. Julia is a decent unit, who has the stats to be a good generalist. The only issue is her terrible force swing that lasts for almost two and a half seconds. A lot of things can happen within that time frame. Either a sudden push towards or away from your base can make Julia easily miss her attack. Her freeze is actually really good if you can get even just two Juliets onto the field, especially after getting level 1 of her freeze talent, which makes up half the additional freeze time. She also has an important niche in being one of the best crowd control units against Saint Dober, who needs to be frozen to prevent him from pushing. She also pairs well with Sanzo, but if you had to pick one or the other, then go with Sanzo for your general anti-crowd controlling needs. Pizza is without a doubt a top 2 non-uber anti-black unit in the game due to a few factors. Pizza already has the stats to be a good generalist with a good standing range, health, and damage, but give it the ability to deal massive damage against any trait with treasure stats, and you see your pizza dealing over 60,000 damage against any black enemy. This amount of damage will nuke almost any black enemy in 2-3 hits. While the range boost doesn't help it outrange anything outside of Toucan, what it does help with is extra survivability, and especially for the trait known to push very aggressively means he will have a much easier time landing hits. His talents are also really good, but the main one is his wave talent, which gets the wave chance up to 30%, and with an attack rate that Pizza has, he can reliably use wave attacks to deal upwards of 125,000 damage in a single hit if a wave connects against black enemies. 
It is also useful in sniping black enemies that are just outside his range since the range of the wave is over 500. I could go on and on about how good Pizza is, but we still have to talk about a lot more units, so in short, Pizza has good generalist stats that nuke black enemies and can take a hit or two. The only reason why Pizza isn't in the top of the priority list is that the units there are much more valuable and Ring Girl can still be a viable option as a unit while you get the top priority units. Our second unit in the other category, and like Delinquent Cat, requires an Elder Cat Fruit. However, unlike Ultra Delinquent, who suffers from range and inconsistency issues, Slapsticks is one of the most important units for Uncanny Legends. They gain a rather impressive stat boost, already turning them from good generalists to great ones, but they also gain strong versus relic enemies. This gives them a 50% damage increase to relic enemies and doubles their health against them. The only relic enemies they don't outrange include Autumn's Omni Strike, Loris, who they can tank a hit and get close to, Loki, Golem Sunfish, and these boss enemies, though for Nala, if your Slapsticks is at a high enough level, can take a hit without being knocked back. Slapsticks is a cornerstone unit of the Uncanny Legends meta and should be one of the first units you should spend your Elder Cat Fruit on. Again, Cataphone suffers the same problem with Tathagata Cat suffers from, outclassed by Sanzo in almost every way possible. Sanzo may have a slightly lower chance to activate their slow ability, but this is made up by the fact that Sanzo is still much more spammable. Even with cost down talents, this is only going to cost you an extra 90 cents for two Sanzos in comparison with one Cataphone. If you want them for their alien niche, you could just use Psycho Cat and Seafarer, the former having a higher chance to slow and having a higher standing range, and the latter for having a better freeze chance, and even more so with talents and better generalist stats. Speaking of Seafarer, Seafarer is absolutely a true form you should consider going for. Seafarer goes from a good alien freezer to an excellent one. Having an increased chance to freeze helps him with stalling out aliens and the health boost is really good for survivability. Speaking of survival, his chance to survive a hit goes from 50% to 100%. This means you can more reliably have Seafarer land one last freeze before going down. If you throw talents into the ring, you could boost their freeze chance to 60%, meaning there's a good chance to get two of them onto the field and start snowballing most aliens, and again, thanks to their good generalist stats, they can help damage several aliens while halting their attacks. Housewife doesn't change too much, only getting a slight speed and health increase with an additional second of slowness and these changes would have made her a medium priority if it weren't for one thing. With Towns, she can unlock the Savage Blow ability. Savage Blow is an ability that triples a unit's damage. For example, a housewife at level 30 with no attack investment deals 9000 damage. With Savage Blow, this goes to 27,000 damage. This might not sound like much, but with how easy it is to get a stack of these things going, you can easily pull off tons of damage really quickly. While it does require a bit of MP investment to get the Savage Blow ability to a 30% activation rate, it is so worth it for the damage she can deal, especially for an LD unit of her cost. If you're wondering, I would say if you have 165 NP to spare, then go for Housewife. Even without Savage Blow, however, her speed and health boost is also useful in terms of reaching the front lines and being able to take that just extra little bit of damage. A rather simple change from Kendo to Kitty of Liberty. However, the main detail is having their attack frequency reduced by a second. This effectively gives them a 47% increase to their DPS, meaning they will not only be able to output more barrier breaking, but also have more damage output in general. Also, because of their rather fast recharge rate for a super rare, in fast paced stages such as no return flights, their one knockback and stats allow them to get in, deal some quick damage, and come around again whenever needed. However, due to the strength of most of the other super rares, Kitty of Liberty gets knocked down a peg or two. Driller Cat is the first of the Grandin units to cover and is probably the third most worthwhile Grandin unit to true form. Sure, they might not get any stat boosts, but the massive reduction in their attack frequency gives them a lot more uptime for their weaken. They also gain the strong ability, and while the extra health isn't going to be doing them too much, the extra 50% damage from that far of a range is always welcome as few non-Ubers can attack well from that far, let alone traitless enemies. If there are some traitless boss you are fighting and need as much crowd controlling against them as possible, then this is a somewhat good unit to pick up. However, due to the nature of Epic Seeds being a rather limited resource compared to other fruits, you really need to think about what you're going to do with them, especially since you're only realistically getting one after Stories of Legend. The damage boost does look nice, as well as a reduction to their cooldown time. However, those are the only changes they get, and in practice, the damage isn't all that much, and the recharge time is still rather long. The lack of a health boost really hurts this unit, and since by the time you can get Neo Pile Driver, a good chunk of zombie enemies will be dealing some good damage. Since Neo Pile Driver has the abilities of a damage control tank, the lack of any health for anything outside of zombies makes them very difficult to use, since most zombie stages will be mixed stages. 
Neo Cutter is probably the best Grandin unit to true form. While the attack boost may not seem like much, if we apply the numbers against red enemies, it is astounding how big of a difference it can make. Without the strengthen, they can already deal an extra 3000 damage against red enemies. When strengthened, however, they could deal another extra 20,000 damage. This allows a Neo Cutter if they connect both hits to deal 122,000 damage against red enemies compared to Power Cutter's 102,000 damage. Again, it may not sound like much, but that extra damage really does leave an impression against the enemies. They also gain wave immunity, allowing you to use them against Toucan and Berserk Cory. This also opens the avenue for Neo Cutter being a wave immune bullet train that trades some damage and a longer recharge time for wave immunity. Most of the time, you can also pair the two together for some incredible burst damage. If you have an epic seed and power cutter, I recommend this being your first grand in unit to true form. The only change you get with this true form is a 50% chance to get a level 1 surge, which gives you approximately a 7.5 chance for a critical surge. Unless you love to gamble, then save this grand in unit for last. Neo Saw goes from a good anti-alien unit to a really good one. While the attack boost may not look like much, remember that Neo Saw has an attack frequency of 3 tenths of a second, meaning their damage can add up really quickly. This gives them 18,000 DPS against aliens, as well as having 127,000 health against aliens, meaning they can also tank quite a few hits before going down. Their main issue with dealing with most starred aliens, especially with the likes of Ultra Baba, is also gone because of their barrier breaker ability. While 20% doesn't sound like a whole lot, remember that Cat Typhoon has a 5% chance to land a critical hit and already deals loads of crits, so imagine that times 4 and you get one of the best barrier breakers in the game. Neo Saw is definitely the second choice for which Grandin unit true form to get, only outclassed by Neo Cutter due to their anti-wave rusher niche. Lastly is our third member of the other category, being Fiend Cat. Fiend Cat gains a nice health boost and a 30% chance to knock back Aku enemies. Being one of the few non-Uber anti-Aku units mean that they shine in their field. However, their real boost comes in the form of two talents, Angel Targeting and more importantly, Resistance. This gives them a 4 times health boost against Aku enemies and 5 times health against Angel enemies if you decide to get their Angel Targeting talents as well. This really helps with their survivability in case a sudden push happens. It also helps them tank something more relevant in terms of Aku enemies, Death Surge. Since Death Surge is common amongst Aku enemies, it can easily cripple your units and especially an unresisted Fiend Cat, but with the talent, she can tank quite a few Death Surges and move on to the next target. As for their Angel niche, it isn't as relevant but can still be super useful, especially when paired with Sanzo as knockback and slow is a really nice combo to keep enemies stunned and pushed back. The main use for them is their anti aku niche, but can be super useful for their anti-angel niche as well. Those are all of the super rare gacha units with the true form, but before I continue, I want to state how many cat fruits it will take to get all of the super rare true forms. To get every single super rare true form, you will need 26 green cat fruit, 24 purple cat fruit, 31 red cat fruit, 24 blue cat fruit, 23 yellow cat fruit, 17 epic cat fruit, 2 relic cat fruit, 2 aku seeds, 10 green, purple, red, blue, and yellow seeds, as well as 5 epic seeds. Now to the final ranking. The super rares I would recommend holding off true forming until the end include Cataphone and Tathagata, as these two are mostly outclassed by Sanzo outside of niche uses. If you want to improve the abilities of a unit or get more mileage out of them, then go for Juliet, Kitty of Liberty, Eye Cat, and Luxury Bath Cat. These units are staples of their respective metagame and should be the first to get if you're struggling with a certain trait. These include Seafarer, Fishman, Pizza, Housewife, and Row. Finally, for the units that are meta-defining and should be the first ones you go for include Can Can, Cyberpunk, and Octopus Cat. These three units are not only some of the best super rare units in the game, but some of the best units in the game period due to their immense strength, abilities, or filling niches almost no one else can. For which Elder Fruit true form to go with first, go with Slapsticks, then Ultra Delinquent after working towards the Stories of Legend true forms. For the Grandin units, the order you should get them goes from Cutter, Saw, Driller, Pile Driver, and lastly is Backhoe. I hope this guide on super rare cat fruit true forming was useful as a way to help you figure out what you should get first with your cat fruits. If you thought this was helpful, then make sure to leave a like and if you haven't already, why not hit that subscribe button as it helps me out in the long run. For those who have true formed their super rares, who is the first one that you true formed? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day.